what's going on everybody welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about carry as you can tell from the thumbnail and the title i am joined here by my buddy chad sabrin it's the second time he's here on the channel last time around i had him on here to talk about the lady and the tramp remake so i figured i'd have him on again for another remake and this time around we're talking about the remake of carry this one being the 2013 remake of the film starring chloe greats moretz and yeah let's go ahead and get into my thoughts on this movie overall what i could say is uh, i didn't re-watch the original first before doing this but i do remember the original very well i have seen it many times and the original is definitely the superior film um yeah i'm just not going to use this video as a way to compare the first to this one i'm going to just try to review this one for what it is um just as a movie in and of itself and give you my thoughts in that direction but what i will say is i think the original film is is definitely a creepier film that definitely leans more into the horror element of the film rather than making it a little bit of a superhero kind of film or in this film kind of an anti-hero kind of thing uh, but yeah overall I'm a huge fan of the original film it's got that eerie creepy vibe and uh, the whole final sequence is just incredibly memorable and the actress who plays Carrie in that original film when I think of Carrie it's her face that I think of, and it still kind of gives me chills. So, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the remake with Chloe Grace Moretz. And overall, what I can say about this film is I think it's a pretty good remake. Now, is the movie better again than the original? No, but I do think this is a pretty solid remake, and if you're watching this movie in and of itself for the very first time, maybe you've never seen the original, maybe you're just somebody who's not super familiar with what's going on, maybe you don't even know this is a remake. I think this is a movie that can be enjoyed by most. Now, with that said, there's definitely some criticisms I have of the film, but overall, I do find this to be a well-made film that has good performances for the most part, but definitely leans into one of those things that a lot of horror remakes of the late 2000s and early 2010s were definitely doing, and that is just leaning so heavily into this over-the-top absurd kind of high school early uh, young adult kind of lifestyle that's just filled with vulgarity and a bunch of shitty people you have the very pretentious over-the-top ridiculous like villain female character that's in all of these movies or like the one female character who is just a flat-out bitch you know who cares about how she looks and how people perceive her and she wants to be you know the traditional chick holding the cell phone that's smacking gum and is just like a bitch and so yeah you have that character in this movie and I'll get into the high school characters in this movie in just one second but overall just like a lot of those films it definitely leans into these very heightened reality versions these hyper reality versions of what young adults and teenagers are very over the top very vulgar very just cynical just rude people and so in this film we follow the character of Carrie played by Chloe uh, Moretz and yeah what I can say about her performance throughout is man she just went for full-blown awkward and uncomfortable the entire time and that's definitely what they were going for you to have this character who's a very sheltered character and you know she has to play that kind of feel and vibe and so you do feel for her character throughout um but um yeah overall you know they went for extremes of every kind of character you know when it comes to her character carrie she's overly awkward overly uncomfortable to watch and is just overly you know nervous and that's really what they're going for every little feel and vibe that carrie gives off in this movie is heightened to whatever that specific emotion is and in the same way the high school students in this film are all taken up to 11, 12, 13, 25, whatever you want to go to, the highest possible number beyond the number that it actually stops at because all the kids in the high school in this movie are just over the top they're ridiculous anything that happens to carrie everybody in the school is laughing at her there's not a single kid with any sort of remorse or that's just a nice guy or has any sort of like sympathy for this girl who's being bullied and picked on like there are literal moments in this film where she has something very tragic or very sad or very you know embarrassing happen to her and you know we all went to high school i'm sure that you know some people in the room would have laughed and undoubtedly there are those people but i have to imagine if you went to a school like mine or just a school with you know human beings that there was definitely people in there as well who had remorse and people who had sympathy who maybe went to go help that person and so in this film there's literally none of that throughout the entirety of the film you have incredibly horrible people that are the students of the school who have zero sympathy zero remorse for this girl even if they're not involved sometimes she's going through this incredibly embarrassing sad scary situation and you see some dude in the back who's laughing at her and it's some fat dude with glasses on that looks like harry potter has just stopped at the buffet and you're just like what the fuck are you possibly laughing at like what are you laughing at you're wearing an orange shirt and you look like a big orange like you should be on the veggie tails and so for some reason 
you're laughing at this poor girl. So that's definitely that's something that's definitely irritated me throughout the course of the film, but entertained me at the same time because it was just such a ridiculous element to this film. And I think a lot of the remakes uh, about these different horror characters, you know, Carrie, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween, the Friday the 13th remake, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, they always lean into these very heightened hyper reality versions of teenagers and young adults that I feel always kind of takes me out of it a little bit. So I went off on a little tangent on that. But yeah, that was definitely something I wanted to talk about here in this review. Uh, for anybody who is not familiar with what Carrie is all about, well, the movie opens up and we're introduced to her mother, played by Julianne Moore, who plays this over-the-top, just religious woman who's just, again, this hyper-realistic version of, you know, what people are like in the real world that are like this. Now, there are definitely crazy people when it comes to religion and there's definitely people who take it to the next level and end up, you know, sheltering their kids and end up just kind of becoming a little bit, you know, not so, but in this film, you definitely have this lady being very crazy. She's clearly mentally disturbed from the very first scene that we see her in, where she gives birth to Carrie. We learn that Carrie's actually the daughter of a rape situation, and now her mother has kept her kind of under this umbrella her entire life. She's completely and utterly sheltered, and beyond that, her mother is, you know, a, a bit abusive you know whether it's uh, verbally or domestically uh, she you know really does shelter her daughter she puts Carrie into this closet that she calls her prayer closet and she pretty much torments her into being her own little perfect angel her own little perfect girl she constantly wants to pray she's constantly calling to God for every little situation even the slightest little thing that is just you know even perceived to be not Christian at all is the worst thing let's call on Jesus let's pray instantly let's lose our minds and she definitely is a very psychopathic character throughout the course of the film she hits herself when things aren't right when things aren't the way that the lord would want them to be she cuts herself she hurts herself she is definitely a psychopath in this film if anybody is the scariest character in this film it's the mother played by julianne moore and i think she does a good job uh, but it definitely makes you feel for carrie because you know she's just trying to be a normal everyday girl and she's got this crazy mother and then you add on the very awkward uncomfortable performance given by chloe and uh, yeah it just leaves for a very weird home dynamic now, I didn't mean to ramble on this much in the earlier part of the review, but overall what I can say about it is that I do enjoy this film. I have had some criticisms, as you guys have heard so far, uh, but I do find this to be a well-acted film from beginning to end. I find the cinematography to be pretty solid. There's a great use of digital and practical effects throughout, and even though it does have a pretty generic teeny bop kind of story at times i think that the performances and the way that the story plays out actually leads for a pretty entertaining movie now before i continue my thoughts on this movie let's go ahead and hear my buddy chad sabrin had to say about this no What's going on everyone? So Anthony A. Perez, I wanted to say thank you very much for having me on your channel. I really do appreciate it, especially for this movie in particular. Guys, Carrie 2013 is a movie that I remember when it came out eight years ago, and I just kept putting it off and off and off. But a month or so ago, Anthony reached out to me and asked if I wanted to go on his channel to review Carrie 2013. And I said to him, thank you very much, man, because it finally gives me a reason to sit down and watch this movie. And another reason to revisit the original because I wanted to rewatch the original anyway, so it gave me a reason to finally watch that one again, which the 1976 original I watched, I believe it was like four years ago for the first time, and I wasn't the biggest fan of, so I wanted to, with the new fresh perspective, watch it and then watch the remake right after, which is what I did. I sat down, I watched the 1976 one, wrote my review on Letterboxd, and then immediately after watched the 2013 remake. Um, so what are my thoughts on the 2013 remake? Well... To be honest, I feel quite mixed about it, um, but I want to talk about the positives first because, you know, I try to consider myself to be a very positive person. First and foremost, I like the acting. I think the acting is pretty good, honestly. Juliana Moore, in particular, really nails the role. I thought she did a great job. Um, like, she gave a performance that I honestly might say was better than the mom performance in the original, maybe. I don't know. The only thing was that Juliana Moore wasn't in it as much, per se, but I did think that she did a really good job. And um, I also really liked uh, Portia Doubleday. Very small role, but she's in the TV show Mr. Robot, which I'm a huge fan of. And so it was it was nice to see a very unique um, you know, role from her. And honestly, I hope that she gets even more work because I feel like after Mr. Robot, she hasn't really gotten anything. But she's a good actress. I mean, you watch Carrie and then you watch Mr. Robot and you're like, wow, these are two different performances. 
Chloe Grace Moretz is also good per usual. Uh, she gives also a different kind of take on Carrie than, you know, obviously Sissy Spacek in 1976, which I thought was cool. Cinematography, I liked. It was very dark, um, very, very track. It's a very interesting way that it was shot. I know it's obviously something where it's like, well, most modern day movies are shot with like dark lighting and everything um, and juice stuff in terms of the color grading. But the reason why I find it interesting is because I like the fact that it's a unique take on the way it was shot compared to the original one. The original one had it where it was almost like a fairy tale. That's the way it was shot. The lighting really kind of emulated this like magical feeling too. It was, it was unique for sure. But this one obviously is more dark and especially as the movie progresses, it gets darker and darker. And um, I personally liked it. The uh, makeup and practical effects I thought when utilized were actually pretty good as well. And um, again, the sound mixing per usual of a horror movie, it was pretty good for the most part, I would say. Um, unfortunately, here's my thing. The opening scene I thought was a positive, but I'll get into the negatives after that opening scene that I'm going to mention. So the opening scene I was watching and I was like, this, this didn't happen in the original. Awesome. They were going to try to honestly not replicate the original. They were going to try to do their own thing. And after the opening scene, they essentially then did, I kid you not, like verbatim. The dialogue was verbatim, word for word, what the original one was. And for me personally, it's like, that's an issue. Like, I get it that they got the same writer that did the original one, and that's cool. But you would think that the writer would look back and say, maybe I could have changed a couple lines here or there, or like, maybe I want to make it more fresh and everything. But no, there's a lot of lines that are lifted right from the original. I would say most of it, to truth be told, as someone that literally watched the original and then the remake right after. So that was kind of disheartening for myself too. And it also has a lot of the same issues of the original. So if you don't really find there to be that many issues of the original, you might like this remake. But for myself, that whole shift into the third act, it just felt very jarring. And I do like jarring in movies, but it felt like with the way that this occurred, it just didn't feel really, feely full earned, especially in this 2013 remake, especially the case, no joke. Um, and also I wasn't a big fan of the ending of the Carrie 2013 remake, which is a shame because I definitely will never forget the ending of the, the 1976 Carrie. So it's a shame really. Now, is this a bad movie? No, Carrie 2013, it's not a bad movie, it's not. It just feels very unnecessary, especially since, again, there was like an inkling of hope that it would try to do its own thing with the, you know, first five minutes or so of the movie. But again, as it progressed, it just ended up becoming an exact carbon copy of the original, except updated in terms of the way it was shot, you know, like a unique kind of approach. And then, you know, more modern sound mixing and, and everything like that. Also, the messages and themes that are so apparent and so like intriguing and unique in the original also are kind of like brushed aside I feel like in this one so I don't know it's it's a shame really I I, I again I'm in the middle though because I, I can't in good consciousness say what a lot of people say like I know a lot of people that say the 2013 remake is terrible I can't say that I really can't it's a mixed bag for me I get why people might like this if there are people that like this including Anthony but for myself I feel mixed and that's why for me personally Carrie 2013 I'll be giving a two and a half out of five star rating. I know Anthony, you don't do ratings, but you know, for myself, I always try to do ratings. So two and a half out of five stars is what I would get this. And I also do hot sauce ratings on my channel. So hot sauce ratings though, it's three or you know higher, but for this movie, because it got two and a half, no hot sauce rating. But guys, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts down below in terms of obviously carry. Um, I'll obviously be on Anthony's channel and don't forget the subscription notification bell and Anthony, once again, thank you very, very much for having me on your channel. I really do appreciate it, man. And hopefully this will be yet another collaboration down the line. Keep giving them, man. Keep giving them. I'm more than willing to work with you, man. I love it. So, guys, again, thank you very much. And, Anthony, I'll take it back to you. A big thanks to Chad for being here in this video. Always a pleasure to have you on, my friend, and I look forward to having you on in the future once again. For anybody who's interested in checking out Chad's channel, he's actually released his own feature films as well as short films that does movie reviews, TV reviews, and all that other fun stuff over on his channel. You guys can find the link to his channel down below in the description box. Go give him some love. Let him know I sent you. And for now, let's wrap up my thoughts on this movie. Uh, I haven't actually spoken about the director of this film. I just want to kind of mention them really quickly, and that is Kimberly Pierce. And I got to say, I think Kimberly Pierce 
did a good job of translating that original film into a remake that definitely takes a lot of modern elements and, you know, makes it fit into the times. Now, Kimberly is not somebody I'm overly familiar with. She's done a lot of television, nothing I'm super familiar with, a couple episodes of some shows that I've watched, but nothing that I'm super, super familiar with when it comes to her work. But I think she did a solid job here in this movie, and I think she definitely directs uh, all the characters to lean into a specific tone that she's setting throughout the course of the film. And for the most part, I think that that tone is definitely met and is consistent throughout even though I have my criticisms about that that time and remakes and the way that they you know portray teenagers and, and early 20 year olds uh, you know I think for the most part the film is an entertaining movie and it's definitely not much of a horror movie and is definitely leaning far more into a lot of the other movies that were coming out at the time which were a lot of comic book movies you know this is 2013 we're only like a year removed from the Avengers movies and there was just so many other big comic book movies that were already coming out in the years before this so this film in a lot of ways leans a lot more into that and uh, you know I didn't finish up my initial thoughts on what this whole movie is all about but yeah we end up finding off that Carrie is, uh, you know, the daughter of, of a rape situation. And her mom has always kept her under this umbrella and always kind of been weary of Carrie as if she is this ev evil entity since she came from an evil situation. And so, yeah, over the course of the film, as Carrie is done just being bullied, as she is done being ridiculed, as she is done being controlled by her mother, she starts to realize over the course of the film that she is actually developing powers. And the movie literally just leads up to this huge massacre at the end of the film where Carrie ends up destroying everybody who has made fun of her and laughed at her, which in the case of this film is pretty much everybody, because like I told you, there's like nobody with remorse at all in any way, shape, or form in this movie, except for pretty much two people in this film. Uh, one of them who actually did something terrible and then had remorse and then one who was a nice person all throughout uh, Those two are played by Gabriella Wilde and Ansel Elgort uh, I believe that's how you pronounce his name But Ansel is the one that I was probably the most impressed with here um, outside of Chloe and uh, Julianne Moore I thought that yeah, he did a really good job here in his role definitely plays that you know hot shot, you know kid in high school we've seen it in a million movies but he plays it well and you definitely uh, feel for his character as he does have sympathy and some sort of connection with Carrie and he really does care about her character over the course of the time that he gets to know her which isn't a whole lot in the movie their time together is pretty limited uh, but he is a nice character in the movie so yeah him and his girlfriend played by Gabriella Wilde I think for the most part do a really good job of being the the nice people in the film even though the girlfriend played by Gabriella Wilde was uh, a bit of a bitch at first but you know she came full circle and by the end of the movie, it's just about Carrie getting her over-the-top revenge with a bunch of superpowers, and they definitely lean into this anti-hero revenge superhero movie kind of feel and vibe in that later half of the film. It doesn't really feel much like a horror film in the way that the original feels. Uh, it does have those horror vibes at times. I feel a little bit more in the earlier part of the film, specifically the opening of the film. But outside of that, I think once she starts to develop her powers, it feels a lot more just like a darker tale of a revenge tale uh, about a character that you sympathize for who's just had enough. And so, yeah, this is is going to be the end of my very rambly review for Carrie. Uh, you guys won't see it, but man, I made a ton of mistakes and it's for some reason this ring light has me so, so hot right here. So I don't even know if you guys saw it, but there was a couple times that I had sweat coming down my head and I had to wipe it off. And anybody who films videos on YouTube knows how that can be. So definitely not my most fluid review that I've had in a while, but I hope you guys enjoyed and I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. So do you guys like Carrie? Do you like the remake more? Do you like this one more? Uh, why did I do these out of order? Who knows? I just kind of wanted to review another remake and I decided to have my buddy Chad on here, so please give him some love. The link to his channel is down below in the description box. A big thanks to you guys for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.